If you want to learn a bit about what the RxJS share and share replay operators do, what hot and cold observables are, how to cache data and prevent repeatedly executing expensive operations like calls to a server or establishing WebSockets, come on a journey with me as I walk through this example. So in this app I'm building, I have a get clients method that returns an observable. And this just returns collection data from Angular Fire, which is providing the observable for me. So this is obviously a Fire store example here, but it's not really relevant to the video. This observable that I'm returning, you could imagine this is just any kind of observable, whether that's a, a request to fetch data, establish a WebSocket, uh, any kind of observable at all, we can just substitute here and the same concepts are going to apply. So I can just subscribe to the observable stream that get clients returns and I can get a collection of my clients. I get all the data that I need. And this is great because I was just displaying that data in a list on the homepage. Uh, it only became a problem when I then wanted to retrieve one specific client. And the reason I wanted to do this was to display that data on a detail page. Now, if you're interested in the specifics of how we could go about doing that with Firestore, I will link to a separate tutorial in the description, which is about Firestore more specifically. But generally speaking, what I might want to do is something like this, where I have a watch client method where I want just a stream of one individual client. So what I might do is just take this get clients method and we will pipe on a map operator to modify the data that's coming through that stream to just return one client specifically rather than every single client. Now, although this method only returns one client in the end, it's still using all of the client data from this method. So if I subscribe to get clients on my homepage, it's going to uh, make a request to the database to get this collection data. And then if I later also subscribe to this watch client, it's also going to make another request to get this collection data. It's going to have to reset up that observable each time that we subscribe to it. This is what we would call a cold observable. When we subscribe to it, it's being set up and then we get the, the data back from it. So let's step through how we might address this situation to make it a bit more uh, performant. So rather than resetting up this observable every single time we need to access it in some way, we might decide to try and cache it. So we might try to do that by uh, setting up a member variable that can hold that observable for us. And we could modify our get clients method to check if this dot clients is defined. And if it's not, we'll set up the observable. And if it already is, we'll just return that observable directly. So this looks like it will work, but it won't actually do what we want it to do. So this is just going to store that reference to the observable on this member variable. We're going to return that, but when we subscribe to it, it's still a cold observable and the observable is going to be subscribed to and it's going to go through its usual setup. It's going to call collection data. It's going to fetch in whatever it needs and then emit that data. We haven't really achieved anything here because collection data is still being called. That request is still going to be made. So this step is necessary for what we're about to do. We do want to just store this single reference to the observable, but we need a little bit more as well. And this is where the share operator comes in. So we can pipe on share, and this is what makes our observable hot. And the general idea with a hot observable is that it's not waiting around for something to subscribe to it to be set up and then start emitting data. It is just going to be emitting data all the time and we can subscribe to it to sort of tap into that stream. So if we set up an observable stream with the share operator here, the first time that we call get clients, the first time that we subscribe to it, it's going to go through that usual setup process as we usually do for a cold observable. We're going to call collection data. It's going to make whatever calls to whatever servers it needs to do to um, set that up. But the main difference here is that now each time that we subscribe to this dot clients after that first time, we're not recreating, we're not resubscribing to this source observable. What this does 
is we're returning a new observable that's just going to be emitting the data for us. So in effect, this share operator is going to create a replay subject that subscribes to our source observable. And then we are just then subscribing to this replay subject. So we can subscribe to this dot clients as many times as we want. And this collection data is only going to be called that first time. So it might sound like we've achieved what we want now. We've sort of uh, cached this observable stream. We're sharing the results among multiple subscribers without needing to recall collection data, but this still won't work exactly how we want it. So as I mentioned, this was now a hot observable. So this observable stream is just going to be alive. And if we then subscribe to it from something else, say for our watch client, this stream is already active and it's already emitted its initial set of data. So say on the home page is when we first called this to get a list of clients. It made its call to collection data. It returns the data. It emits it. We make use of that on the home page. Then we go to the detail page. We subscribe again, but it's not going to re-emit that initial set of data. When we make our second subscription with watch client, we are only going to receive data when that observable stream emits another bit of data. So in this case, we're using a Firestore collection. So if the data were updated in the database, that would cause this to emit some new data. And then our watch client would be able to get that data because it's already subscribed when that data is emitted. Now, obviously we don't want to wait around for a data update to occur in the database to get the data we need. We want it right away as soon as we subscribe. So that is why we use share replay. So share replay does basically the same thing, but it's going to replay a number of old data emissions from that stream. So if we use share replay one, we're saying that anytime that somebody subscribes to this stream, we want to repeat whatever the last emission was. So in this case, on our homepage, we get that initial set of data. And now when our watch client comes along and subscribes again, it is going to repeat that same data emission that it just made. So we can get that initial set of data right away. And you can just change this value here to say how many of the previous data emissions you want to play when something else subscribes to this. But a lot of the time it's just going to be one because you just want one initial value. But there may be cases where you do want sort of historic values as well. Okay, so we're almost done here and this works just fine. But another important thing to understand is what happens when nothing is left subscribed to this observable anymore. So as well as just supplying a buffer size here for how many data emissions we want to repeat, we can also supply a ref count value. Now by default, ref count will be false, but what this does is actually pretty significant. So there is an internal reference count that is going to keep track of how many subscribers this stream has. And by default, when ref count is false, even if that number drops to zero, this stream, this hot observable stream is going to continue existing and emitting data even when nobody is listening to it. And then if something comes along later and subscribes to it, it sort of can pick up where it left off and it's still just sitting there emitting data. So in some cases that might be what you want, but the downside is that potentially if you forget about it, this could just be something sitting in the background in your application that's emitting data and it can just go on living forever without ever actually being used, which could end up negatively impacting your application. However, if we set ref count to true, then this share replay observable is going to unsubscribe from the source observable whenever there are no subscribers left listening for data. And so then what that means essentially is that this observable then becomes cold again and it's not until something subscribes again that it is then going to re-trigger subscribing to this source observable. It's going to call collection data again and then it is once again a hot observable and we're back in the same situation as we were before where it's just this single shared stream. So basically setting ref count to true is going to turn it off when nobody is listening. Then you're going to have to start it back up again 
if you leave it set to the default value of false, it's just always going to be on no matter if anyone is listening or not. Okay, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please feel free to leave a like and subscribe and I will see you on the next one.